This is the most expensive version of Apple's previous Mac Pro, the trash can that was sold from 2013 all the way through 2019. And this is the least expensive version of the most expensive version of Apple's least expensive desktop. Did that make any sense at all? Anyway, this is the double bin version of the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's got the 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and half a terabyte of storage, and it costs $1,000. $299. This on the other hand is a fully loaded trash can Mac Pro. It's got the 12 core CPU, dual D700 graphics. How much RAM does this have actually? Oh, it's got 128 gigabytes of RAM. That's the most that you can put in this thing. And it's got a two terabyte SSD. So this thing, if you had bought it anywhere from you know, four to 10 years ago, would have run you more than $10,000. So the question for today is, how does this $10,000 high-end Mac Pro from the previous generation compare to a lower, middle, mid-range desktop of today? Let's see, is there any hope for a trash can Mac Pro like this, or should you just be completely ignoring it and buying Apple Silicon? I'll tell you one thing, if you are looking to buy one of the new Apple Silicon Macs, one of the best ways to do it is through today's video sponsor, Best Buy, and their new Upgrade Plus program. Upgrade Plus is an affordable way to get your favorite device today, pay for it over time, and upgrade to a new model after 36 months. Monthly payments are low. You can get the new M2 Pro 14-inch base model with the same specs as this Mac Mini for $43 per month. Then, at month 37, you have a number of options. You can pay the remaining cost of the Mac to own it outright, you can trade it in for a brand new one without paying the remaining balance, or you can return it and also not have to pay the remaining balance. This allows you to own a new Mac every three years without a large upfront payment or having to go through the hassle of selling your computer when you want to upgrade. Upgrade Plus gives you an affordable way to own a modern Mac, so if you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description below. Again, a big thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring, and now let's get into this really interesting comparison, shall we? Okay, so let's jump straight into this comparison with a real world test. Final Cut Pro. This is my tried and true 30 minute 4K 60 FPS 10 bit clip and we're going to render a color correction on it. Now, as soon as we set things on our way, you probably already noticed that the M2 Pro is pulling out a significant lead and if we speed things up a little bit, wow, it's not close at all. In fact, even now standing here after this Mac Mini has been done for about 15 minutes, we're still at 40% on the Mac Pro. That's, that's pretty crazy. So, so why is this happening? Because when you look at other areas, you don't see this same, you know, massive, massive disparity. I mean, take a look at Cinebench, for example. In Cinebench, our double binned M2 Pro scores 11,716, whereas the Trash Can Mac Pro is 8,111. And that's honestly not terrible for a 10 year old CPU. Remember, this thing is Ivy Bridge, like a unibody MacBook Pro. So th this is an old architecture, but you know, there's 12 cores, so in multi core tasks, it does pretty okay. It's not that far behind the M2 Pro Mac Mini. So why is it still chugging along in Final Cut Pro here? Well, there's a couple of things going on. Number one, of course, is the Apple Silicon dedicated media encoders. They are there specifically to accelerate this task and they do that pretty darn well. Another thing, this Mac Pro is using a Xeon chip. And if you have a Mac with an Intel Xeon chip, your score is gonna be lower. That's just the way that it works because Xeon chips don't have dedicated graphics. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would I care about having integrated graphics when I've got dual AMD graphics cards in this thing? That was the point. Well, Intel uses their iGPUs to accelerate tasks like this. It's called Intel QuickSync. And if you don't have it, like on a Xeon chip, it makes things really, really slow. Even my 18 core iMac Pro was pretty slow at rendering because it didn't have an iGPU. So when you're talking about a video editing scenario like this one, 
Apple Silicon is almost always going to be the way to go unless you have like a $50,000 Mac Pro with an afterburner card. That's the only way you're going to have any chance of catching Apple Silicon. But is the trash can Mac Pro just something to point and laugh at or is there potentially some angle where the thing kind of makes sense. So bear with me for a second, but I think I found one. What you're seeing now is both of these machines running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p medium benchmark. And obviously the M2 Pro is absolutely smoking the trash can. Overall, it's about twice as fast. 34 FPS average versus 67 FPS average. But if we go back to the beginning and speed up the footage, the Mac Pro is loading everything significantly faster. And this is a benefit of the trash can Mac Pro. As ironic as it seems, given that Apple killed this thing because of its lack of upgradability, it is comparatively quite upgradable. And as a result of that, I've actually got mine with a two terabyte OWC Aura X2 SSD in it. So originally I think this thing had 256 and I've gone from 256 to two terabytes and it's now faster, faster even than a modern Mac. So while it's not very powerful, it does at least have a lot more versatility than what we have now. In fact, this kind of goes across the board. If you really wanted to, you could buy a base model trash can Mac Pro. That comes with a quad core Xeon, two D300 graphics cards, and like 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. That is nothing. But you could take that machine and upgrade it all the way, which is actually what I've done, to the 12 core, 128 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD, and you can even upgrade the graphics cards if you so choose. Although you only have three options, the D300, the D500, and the D700, and none of them are very fast. So that is an undeniable benefit that the Trash Can Mac Pro has over Apple Silicon. However, I think that also comes with a limit because you can do what I've done and max out every single spec on this Mac Pro. And it still is not gonna be as fast as the entry-level M2 Pro. Remember, this is the double-binned one. We're missing two CPU and three GPU cores. So it gets faster than this, but this, does not get any faster. And we can really see that if we fire up some more benchmarks. In the GFX Bench 4K Aztec off-screen test, we're looking at 78 FPS compared to 28 on the trash can. And in the Manhattan test, we're at 1,015 compared to 283. If we pop over into Blender, the Classroom CPU test also reveals the differences in these architectures. We're looking at 10 minutes and 38 seconds on the trash can compared to seven minutes 40 on the M2 Pro. Switch over to the GPU and we see a similar story. Two minutes 28 for the classroom test compared to three minutes 10 on the trash can. And in the BMW GPU render, you're looking at 47 seconds on the M2 Pro compared to a minute 24 on the trash can. Now, interestingly, when you compare these results to what we saw over in Tomb Raider, they look a little bit different. In Tomb Raider, the M2 Pro was scoring double the FPS, but it's not taking half the time in Blender. Now, we can probably chalk that up to optimization because Blender doesn't run that well on Apple Silicon, as we saw in my comparison between the RTX 4090 and the M2 Max. The M2 Max does very good, but Optics on NVIDIA just absolutely trashes anything that Apple has right now. What does surprise me though is how well this performed in Tomb Raider considering that that is an application running through Rosetta. It's pretty crazy that even with that translation layer involved, we're still getting double the FPS and with a lot less power consumption, I might add. Yeah, this thing is a thirsty boy as you would expect for a 12 core Intel Xeon with an Ivy Bridge technology. This thing's sucking down 150 to 200 watts compared to this guy, which is like, you know, 30. So yeah, Apple Silicon, absolutely mental. However, what you might not expect is a slight deviation from my usual comparison, because at this point I would be saying, wow, look at Intel consuming all this power. And then I would play a clip of how loud the computer is. So let me do that now. 
Wait a minute. This doesn't sound like a Boeing 747 at takeoff. What's going on here? Well, Apple was actually a little clever with this design. As much as it was hated for six years before it got replaced, they did do one thing right, and that is this. This is all fan. The entire diameter of this machine is fan. There's just one big boy, and it sucks all of the air in through the bottom, through this massive heat sink, and then shoots it out the top. It's, it's like a chimney, really. There's so much heat coming out the top of this thing that you could heat your entire room, but it's very quiet. And the CPU sits at about 70 degrees when you're running Cinebench, which is what this does, too. This is actually one of the better cooled machines. Well, at least in terms of the CPU, these GPUs had a tendency to die, uh, which is not ideal. But I guess that also brings us on to why this thing failed. It's these GPUs. That's really what killed this machine. It's a nice design, but these GPUs are, for one, dual cards, which Apple was completely wrong about, and they didn't really get iterated on. So even though they are technically swappable, you only have these three options, there wasn't anything newer that you could install, and it just kind of kept this machine stuck where it was for six years. And that's why this machine is actually only like four years old. It was bought at some point in like mid 2019. But setting all of those things aside, this is a really interesting comparison because what we're looking at here is Apple's biggest failure versus what I would consider to be one of their best moves to date. This is a very, very compelling product. At $12.99, you can get yourself a very powerful machine that is smoking a Mac Pro from a couple of years ago that would have been $10,000. But what actually is surprising is, I sort of framed this video as a comparison between a $1,300 machine and a $10,000 machine, because that's what you would have paid if you bought this thing new. But nowadays, these things are dirt cheap. Apple dropped support for them in Ventura, so they can only run Monterey, and, and that alone has dropped the prices quite a bit. If you set up an eBay search for dual D700s, as well as the 12 core CPU, you can find these things with 64 gigs of RAM and a bunch of storage for the same price as the entry-level M2 Mac Mini. Now, do I think you should buy it? Probably not. I, I think the Mac Mini is a better investment in the long run. I mean, this has already lost support. I don't know how many more years you're gonna be able to get out of it, but at the very least, if you do need an Intel machine for whatever, let's say you wanna dual boot Mac OS and Windows, bunch of x86 stuff, these things are now cheap enough that, strangely, they're not a terrible deal. As surprising as it is to say, there is actually a scenario where it might make sense to buy one of these machines. And that is, if you go on eBay and you find these things in their base configuration, you can get them for like $300. And you can buy the 12 core Xeon CPU for anywhere between $40 and $70. And that means that you could buy a quad core, upgrade it to a 12 core, and be all in for less than 400 bucks. Now, I don't wanna say that that's you know, better than buying a Mac Mini, because it's not. The, the M1, M2, M2 Pro Mac Minis are undeniably better, but when you're talking about a sub $400 Mac, this is not bad at all. I mean, honestly, I would, I would spend $400 just to have this thing. I mean, look at it. This is, to this day, one of my favorite looking Apple computers. It is absolutely gorgeous, even if it's a little controversial. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this comparison. It's not as cut and dry as I was expecting, insofar as while the Apple Silicon absolutely toasts it, this is still not a terrible machine. I'm very conflicted, so I'm interested in hearing your guys' thoughts on the subject. Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, a huge thanks to everyone for watching this video. Make sure to get subscribed, and I will see you guys in the next one.